everybody. Thanks for joining. My name is Maureen Kane, and today we're going to talk about how to optimize your posts for LinkedIn. Because believe it or not, yes, you can fly by the seat of your pants, but if you want to put less risk into it, you can maximize your views on LinkedIn. And you're not going to get hundreds of thousands of views on every single post regardless of what you do, because there is some things that are out of our control. But certainly if you do a number of things, six things I'm going to talk about today, it can maximize your chances of getting the best views. And why do we want to get the best views? Really, if you are looking to market yourself or your company, if you can get seen by more people, certainly it's going to help you create more opportunities. So I'm just going to jump in and share my screen. It's fairly impromptu. Um, I will give the opportunity to ask questions at the end. I want to share. Lost my presentation already. I'll give the opportunity to ask questions at the end. And if anybody doesn't get an opportunity, feel free to email me afterwards. My email address is maureen at linkedinbreakfastclub.co.uk. Here's my presentation. Let's get started here. I am using Canva. I love Canva for lots of content because it's super easy. Can I just check before I launch into my spiel? Can I get a thumbs up if you can see my screen, which is optimized post for LinkedIn? Okay, yes, thank you very much, Belinda. Okay, so I'm gonna run through some slides and I'm gonna dip in and out of LinkedIn because presentation. So first of all, I just kind of want to talk about why bother trying to optimize your posts. Again, if you are on LinkedIn for fun, which I don't know many people who are, you don't need to bother. You may as well just go away just now. And thank you very much for coming. If you are on LinkedIn to maximize your business opportunities, whether that's for career or for business or for yourself, it really pays to learn a few tips and tricks. Now, before I begin, um, for those who are not members and who don't know me, um, I've been using LinkedIn, I've been saying 18, 19 years for a couple of years, that might be 20 years now, pretty much since LinkedIn started in, on the beta program. I was one of the first users in the UK. And I used it um, when I worked as a corporate um, director, using it to get opportunities for the business I was working for. And when I became self-employed, I've used it extensively to win business for myself. So much so that I, I made over a thousand sales in two years. And I've kind of progress that method to train other people how to use it and I think I've trained over 1500 people to date in the last couple of years alone and I also create content um, with my team of virtual assistants for lots of companies and individuals. So day in day out I am posting on LinkedIn for myself and for my clients and I quickly see what's working and what's not and there's no better way than doing to really learn what's working, what's not. And things have been changing quite a lot recently. Partly that's because LinkedIn are rolling out new features, which they do quite a lot. And quite annoyingly, they don't really seem to test these things out very well. They just seem to roll them out and it can impact views in a way. So views can be up and down regardless. No matter what we do, LinkedIn views can be up and down a little bit. Let's look at some of the achievements. This is an example of a client, literally from a couple of weeks ago. Their views, they were, they were basically struggling to hit 100 views per post. And with a few tweaks to their content, and I'm talking literally a few tweaks, which I'm going to go through, they have been achieving anything from 50,000 to 129,000, which is this one. Um, and that's just in the first month of working with them. Not just about views, so this is again from a client. This was, you know, a really good post, 515,000, but that was an increase for them of 804,000. So pretty significant. Also location wise, if you can basically target and optimize your post, you can get better locations and also the right job title. So it does impact. And again, there's certain things you can do if you're looking to use some of the major hashtags like technology and innovation. Yes, you might get locations such as India, et cetera, New York. But if you're still getting 20,000 people from London, as far as I'm concerned for me, which is where I live, that's hitting the button. So the more kind of um, followed hashtags you use, you will get a, get a wider audience, of course. So again, just run through a few. Again, this is a client um, not optimized, 134, five versus optimized 88. So a significant difference 
And this is why I bang on about this is not just a little difference, it's huge. Um, 164 views versus 55,000. So, you know, why bother using LinkedIn? Why bother opting? I mean, this, this is a little bit out of date. It's probably 32 million LinkedIn members and there's new people coming on all the time. So even if you've got posts from three months ago, you could take them and optimize them based on what you've learned today and then go and repost them because new people will be coming on and seeing them all the time. The opportunities you can create from LinkedIn are endless. And again, depending on what you're looking to do really will define what that is. But whether you're an employee or employer, director, or you've got a company or your own brand, the opportunities are really endless. And, you know, I've learned this for myself. Um, I mean, now I'm actually working on like doing LinkedIn stuff, which is, is a door that's opened for myself, but also I see it for my clients every day. I started working with a new client this week she's on and basically within the first week she got an email to her um LinkedIn inbox basically saying the business inquiry and you know that's just from going from nothing to starting posting doesn't always happen that quick it depends what you're doing but it can success can come quickly now let's move into optimization because I'm 10 minutes in already so optimization you can optimize your LinkedIn profile, first of all. And again, the reason why to optimize your LinkedIn profile is that you will appear in more searches. When I talk about optimizing LinkedIn profile, now this isn't really what the training course is about, but we'll just jump in here. Let's jump onto LinkedIn. Can I just check also you can see my LinkedIn? Can you just give me a thumbs up if they can see my LinkedIn? to make sure you can see the page I'm sharing. Thank you. So if you go to your profile, optimizing your profile really is making sure that you have got, you know, some of the keywords that you are working on. So if you are a coach, for example, I would be having that in your headline. I'd be also having that in your banner. And I'd also be having that in your about section. Keep moving it. So about six years. So I try and look at this every certainly six weeks, to one month to make sure that whatever I am focusing on in terms of content, my about section, my banner, my headline, all can kind of speak to that thing because and have the keywords in. And again, you can you can put add in hashtags that you're talking about. And LinkedIn are focusing more and more on hashtags, which I'm going to talk about in a little while, but make sure that your profile first of all for, is got optimized using keywords and these will help you appear more in the search and it also does impact your views if you don't have an all-star profile i can never find this but um it tells you if you've got you if you've missing out some blanks let me just try and find it I've got an all-star profile. But if you don't, I will tell you, you've not got an all-star profile. If you don't have an all-star profile, that will impact your views. There's so many things that impact views. Number of connections you have will impact views. If you've only got a couple of thousand followers, this will impact your views, even with help from engagement. So again, those are little things, but I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about posts. So you can optimize personal and company page posts and company pages and personal posts. So company page posts obviously are on my company page. So any posts you put on a company page, these can be optimized as well as posts from personal. And I'm just gonna run through a bit more details about that. So how to optimize there's really six things that specifically will help you get more views on posts headline i'm going to go into more details the style format hashtags and just turn this off keep tweaking the whole way through sparking conversations and engagement so these are the six key things that will impact views on your posts if you basically follow all of these and try and get basically all of them as close as possible, 
you will get the maximum views on every post. And I said, you're not going to get hundreds of thousand views on every post for lots of reasons. One, the content might be rubbish. For two, the actual LinkedIn algorithm has got a mind of its own. But these are the things that I know to be true that the LinkedIn algorithm will look at. So we're going to look at these individually. So headline, first of all, so you go to the post. So this is one from last week. So six, six thousand. So headline. So for this one, let's look at this one. So the format and the headline of a post are absolutely essential. People, my dog snoring underneath me. People only when they're scrolling through the millions and millions of posts. If the headline does not grab them, they are not going to stop. So you really need a headline which is going to get people to click see more to read the rest of your post. That's how you link to the more people that view your post, LinkedIn will show it to more people. So again, I'm not a copywriter, but there's lots of help on Google about getting headlines. But if you think about any newspaper, um, even online ones, but if you think about the days when we used to read newspapers, headlines are absolutely everything the right headline will say used to sell millions of papers the wrong headline wouldn't so a headline is absolutely key try not to say this if you're doing a visual try not to, do, to say the same thing on the visual as you would on the headline so again a short sharp headline there is actually websites that help you come up with the best headlines for social media roger did you have a question let's see Somebody's around. I don't know what's happening. So there is websites. There is websites that help you come up with headlines if you are not that great. And, you know, things like asking questions, things like numbers, etc. These are really good. Let's say 50%, 55% increase in views. Or for me, I could say 100, I could do a headline of 804% increase in views that would be a great one then in the body of the post you would get give a bit more detail now I'm not a fan of long form text posts but I'm not saying don't do them but our LinkedIn articles right now are not working very well so for me personally I generally keep the text relatively short it depends if you call it a short or long and I'll kind of bunch it up into different paragraphs most people view LinkedIn on their mobile phone so you want to keep it short and sweet. The purpose of the post is really to get them to learn more about you, learn more about what you do, and for them to, you know, want to follow you, number one, and also give them some more insights. So they keep following you because a lot of people will get bored of seeing your posts. And, link, and once you click to view my post today and read it, and if you like and comment on it, tomorrow LinkedIn will show you my post again. So again, you've got to keep it interesting, keep it engaging. So headline, again, as I was saying, is first one. The style of the post, as I call it, is another one that really impacts it. So the style of the post could be, this is a slideshow post, and it's only, or a carousel, as they call it, it's only a one-page one, or a document post. So there's various different types of posts, and depending on what type of post, LinkedIn will give it more or less airtime. I'm just going to have to stop there in two seconds because I really don't have my plug in. I'll be right back in a second. The power of live video. <laughs> Slightly jet lagged, but anyway, so I'm back. So yes, where was I? So yeah, the style of post, you can get a document post, you can get a text only post, an image post. Image post could be two, could be a GIF, so that's a moving GIF. It could be a photo, it could be multiple photos, or it could be an image, for example, a PNG or JPEG file from Canva. It also could be an article, but I wouldn't waste your time with them right now. Also could be a video. So depending on which format you use, LinkedIn will decide how many of these types of posts they will show in the feed. For example, polls, I forgot about a poll. So polls about a month or two ago, you, there was zillions of them in the LinkedIn feed. However, now LinkedIn have changed the algorithm to mean that we will see less polls. Document posts are still doing pretty well. 
and even one page document posts are doing quite well. However, not just any old document post, the actual topic and context of it does make a difference. So things that are working really well, believe it or not, things like this, which is a quote. And I'm sure what happens is once people find out what's working well, every man and the dog jump on that and then LinkedIn change it again. But right now, a one page quote is actually working quite well. This got 66,000. And again, it depends on the other factors such as the headline and the other factors. So the format makes a huge difference. The things that are working really well, so I'm gonna do a separate video right now. Document posts are still doing well, but again, you have to mix it up. The other things that are working pretty well are actually, which has been a no-no up until now, is actually current and news topics. So linking out to a video, linking out to a news article, which, you know, previously on LinkedIn, if you use an external web link, they would, the views would be rubbish. Now they're actually doing quite well. So let's say, for example, something that I was looking to post would be about the sugar content in wine. It's been lots of news about, um, you know, how we're drinking far too much sugar. If I posted a link to that article in the Metro, for example, and I put, again, a good headline, the good hashtags, that's probably going to do really, really well. And I would say what I class is really well is probably about 40,000. So external web links to current relevant stories. And the reason why that is, it's not really that complicated. It really is because if you tap into something that's topical, something that's current, and again, you put a little, your spin in it, it's something that people are, is in the news, people are already talking about it, they've got an opinion. So if you can tap into what's current, that's going to work really well, link out to that and put your opinion on it. Slideshow posts are ones that this are still working well. Carousel posts with this giving like tips and hints or this is what did this get 56,000 views. Multi-page ones, but again, it's got to be interesting for people to do it. If you just do anything about it's not necessarily working. It's worked well, Let's see, that's not worked 4,000. Again, it's got to be something people are interested in. So carousel posts are working quite well. Text only are doing okay. Multi-page images seem to be working quite well, but again, depends on topic. And external posts linking out. I think we're just trying to say something to me. I'm not going to do it live. Anyway, so these are the posts that are working quite well. So I'll run through that again. So carousels, document posts, current news posts linking into that. And those are the ones that are working right well. That will change as things go on. Videos are actually working slightly better and sort of GIFs, but as and when LinkedIn change, the algorithm changes. But for what, what's working really well for me for clients right now that I'm posting two or three times a week, I'm doing one carousel post. So one kind of maybe multi-page post with a headline along the lines of like three reasons why you should try this or three reasons not to. And I'm then also doing one, one page kind of quote type post like this one with something uplifting and inspiring. And then I'm also doing one other post, which will be either a GIF, a text only post. And a combination of those three, and what I'm finding is at least one of those posts are doing really, really well on views. You can't guarantee every single one, but one of them is really doing very well on views. The key thing is to mix it up. So that's the format. Style is, the format is terms of how it's laid out. You must basically leave a line after the headline and space it out. Make it easy for people to read. Don't put it all, just all one big paragraph. Little things like that really make a difference in terms of the people consuming the information. Again, just like newspapers, they do headlines, etc. I like a few emojis, but that's personal to me. Don't feel you have to. It doesn't make a difference in terms of the views. So I've done headline style format. Hashtags are absolutely key. I'm going to come back to that. Spark a conversation. For me, again, it's a social media platform. It's a network. If you want to have lots of views, it needs to be a conversation. So many people post something up saying, here's my new product, here's my new, here's my webinar, come and join. 
it's not a conversation starter as a conversation stopper. Yes, you might get some links. So even if you use the Breakfast Club for engagement, it's not really going to make your post go well. You want to spark a conversation, which is really why can the current news posts right now are working really well. Because, for example, I mean, there was loads about Brexit. There was loads about Boris. You know, there's so many, anything that's topical and in the news on GMTV, if you watch Breakfast TV, it's a great inspiration because they're always talking about things that are news. Tap into something that the key thing is just not randomly posting that. Try and link the text in the body of the post to what you do or, or something you've got an opinion on. So try and link this bit into something along the lines of what you're doing and that's where the magic happens when you're talking about something current you're linking it into what you're doing so people are really understanding you as well and you're getting the views so ask a question basically that's that's what i'm saying if you ask a question either in the headline the end somewhere in it it's really you're asking people to engage in that post and we are human beings of nature ask us to do something we typically do if you don't ask and sometimes it's not appropriate or, or you don't have a question, but if you're just put, shouting on your megaphone, look at my stuff, it's really difficult for people to engage on that post. The sixth thing is engagement. The LinkedIn algorithm, you know, is, you know, machine. It's constantly changing. Nobody knows it 100%. I said, I just learned from doing. But what I do know is if you can get enough engagement in the first couple of hours, that's going to really help LinkedIn think, number one, your post is valuable, but also show it to more people. That will be more of your first connections, more of your second connections. And when, when people start to like and comment on your post, it takes it to their network. That's how you'll get random people commenting on your post. And before you know it, they're going to start, if you connect with people, if you connect with second connections and third connections who like and comment on your post, they're going to see your post the next time you post. So that's how your network goes. Um, if anybody wants to know more about the LinkedIn Breakfast Club, we basically help with that engagement in the first couple of hours. And if you do all of these things, it's really going to give you maximum. Hashtags are probably the most important thing right now. So I'm going to talk about that specifically. So hashtags, again, so many people get this wrong. Hashtags really should be all based around the target market you are targeting. And again, that might be something different. So here, for example, always people talk about how number of hashtags. I always say four or five. And typically I will use some of the major trending hashtags. You can Google trending hashtags or 2022 on LinkedIn. There's loads of websites. I'm not gonna recreate that wheel. But leadership, technology, innovation. These are three um, large following. I mean, there's millions of people following these hashtags. And more and more LinkedIn are basically showing people content of the hashtags that they follow. So I want to, I want to target people who are entrepreneurs, startups, um, directors, and this is why I use these hashtags. I wouldn't be using hashtags like LinkedIn marketing, et cetera, because the only people that really follow them are people that do LinkedIn marketing. So you need to really get together a list of 20 hashtags. And this is kind of similar for Instagram as well. You need to get together about 20 hashtags and use four or five of these different ones every day. Some will work well, some will, won't, but this is absolutely key. If you use about 10 hashtags and they're all, you know, tiny following hashtags, then you're not going to get the audience. And I'll not, some people say, oh, well, leadership is, is really wide, but if you can get your post seen by 50, at least one post seen by 50,000 people every single week, you know, some, a percentage of them are going to be your target market. And again, the way to get your target market is a number of ways. Connect to them every week, use the hashtag, and also comment on their post daily. If you pick 10 companies that you want to target and comment on their, even like their posts, you're getting, they're going to start coming into your LinkedIn feed, but also you're going to come into their LinkedIn feed and get on their radar, which is again, off topic slightly. But hashtags are absolutely key so um in part of my strategy session i'm doing people now i'm actually pick, getting helping them put together those 20 hashtags and more and more i mean the last night i was watching all those linkedin updates and i don't know if anybody's here that was talking in our chat group but there was hashtags i mean there were 
the, you can definitely tell that LinkedIn are doing some hashtags that are all over LinkedIn. You can actually see following networking. So if you do all of these six things, so get a headline, you know, you want people to look, format the post so it's, you know, structured, easy on the eye, mix up the formats of the post and try using the ones that you know that work. Certainly a couple of them. If you want to use photographs, videos, I'm not saying don't use them, but certainly maybe focus first on these posts. Ask a question, make it engaging, make it a conversation. And what was the other one? Engagement. If you can get engagement in the first hour or two, it's really going to help your post grow quicker. And LinkedIn posts grow over a couple of days. What I've noticed in the last couple of weeks is quite often, maybe on the first couple of hours, it only got to maybe a thousand views. But if I look back day two or day three, it's jumped up 20,000. So LinkedIn are showing the posts over a much longer period. It used to be just one or two days. But if it's a, if it's a post that LinkedIn seem has got a lot of followers of hashtags, it's great and quirky and unique. Again, don't copy people, try and do stuff about you. It will grow over a week. So it's worthwhile looking back at your old post to see which ones have worked. And ultimately, you know, I think if people buy into you, so talk about things that you do, that you know about, that you talk about, that you listen to, that you see around you. It's really important to be authentic. And I think that comes across week in, week out. And you don't need to post five times a week. I typically post between four and five times a week. You don't need to. To get these views, I'm posting for my clients two or three times a week. And we're getting, you know, typically we're averaging out about 100,000 views a week by doing this, but sticking to this religiously. And as I said, you know, that sometimes they may have an off week and a few people have been saying the views have been right down. But I mean, my views have been down from maybe 40,000, one post to 20,000. I'm still happy with 20,000. And again, that's where it's kind of out of our control. But if you stick to these things, it's going to really help maximize. Slightly over time, so I'm just going to quickly done that and again consistently week in week out if you aren't connected to me do connect and i'm going to open up for questions i know i've said a lot i'm going to stop recording this now if i can find the record button